Hello, everyone. I'm very pleased to study international trade practice with all of you. Today, let's learn together the second section of Chapter Five: Negotiation of Cargo Transport Insurance Terms. In the second section, we will mainly learn about the terms and types of cargo transportation insurance. In this lesson, we will mainly continue learning from the previous lesson. In the last class, we covered general additional insurance. And special additional insurance in the supplementary insurance. In addition, there is another type of marine transportation cargo insurance called specialized marine transportation cargo insurance. According to the regulations of China's marine transportation refrigerated cargo insurance clauses, marine transportation refrigerated cargo insurance is divided into two basic types of insurance: refrigerated insurance. And refrigerated all risk insurance. Refrigeration insurance refers to the scope of liability that insurance companies bear for refrigeration insurance. In addition to the coverage of water damage insurance, it is also responsible for corruption or losses caused by refrigeration machines for more than 24 hours stopping working continuously. Refrigerated all risk insurance. Refers to the coverage of the insured goods for spoilage or loss caused by external factors during transportation, in addition to the various liabilities covered by the aforementioned refrigerated insurance. According to the provisions of China's marine transportation bulk ton oil insurance clauses, marine transportation bulk ton oil insurance is the insurance company's coverage. Due to any reason caused the insured tank oil any shortage, leakage, contamination, or deterioration, the third point is the transportation insurance for live animals and poultry, according to the provisions of China's marine, land, or air transportation insurance terms for live animals and poultry. The transportation insurance for live animals and poultry is an additional insurance. That insurance companies are responsible for compensating for the deaths of live animals and poultry during transportation. According to the regulations of China's land transportation cargo insurance clauses, the basic insurance types for land transportation cargo are divided into two types: land transportation insurance and land transportation or risk insurance. In addition, there is also land transportation refrigerated cargo insurance. Applicable to refrigerated goods by land, which is also a basic insurance. In addition, in the additional insurance, in addition to the war risk clause applicable only to railway transportation, the additional insurance in marine transportation cargo insurance also applies to land transportation cargo insurance. First, land transportation insurance and land transportation or risk insurance. The coverage of land transportation insurance is roughly similar to that of marine water damage insurance, and the coverage of land transportation or risk insurance is roughly similar to that of marine or risk insurance. Second, land transportation refrigerated cargo insurance. Third, war insurance for land transport of goods. War risk insurance for land transportation of goods. Can only be added on the basis of insured land transportation insurance or land transportation or risk insurance. For land war insurance, most private insurance companies abroad do not provide coverage. But in order to meet the needs of foreign trade business, insurance companies in China generally accept additional coverage, but currently only limited to train transportation. According to the provisions of China's air transport cargo insurance clauses, the basic types of air transport cargo insurance are divided into air transport insurance and air transport or risk insurance. Both of these basic insurances can be insured separately, and in addition to one of them, additional insurances such as war risk can be added. Additional insurance types in marine cargo insurance. Can also be selectively used in air cargo insurance. 
The fourth point is postal transport insurance. According to the postal package insurance terms and conditions in China, there are two basic types: postal transport insurance and postal or risk insurance of postal transport insurance. In addition to one of the basic postal transport insurance between the policeholder and the insurance company, through negotiation, additional insurance such as postal war risk can be added. For a long time, in the international insurance market, the London-based Association Cargo Series has had a wide impact on countries around the world. At present, many insurance companies in countries and regions around the world directly adopt this clause in international cargo transportation insurance business. When formulating domestic insurance clauses, or refer to or adopt the content of this clause, this clause was first formulated by the Joint Cargo Insurance Committee in 1912, in order to adapt to different peer risk laws, precedents. Commerce, shipping, and other aspects. For the changes and development needs, it has been supplemented and revised multiple times. Currently, the latest revised version on January first, two thousand and nine, is being used. The London Association cargo terms mainly include the following six types. The above A, B, and C all have independent and complete structures. With clear provisions for underwriting risks and exclusions, so they can all be insured separately. War insurance and strike insurance also have independent and complete structures, and can be insured as separate types if necessary, with the consent of the insurance company. Malicious damage insurance is an additional type of insurance, and its terms are relatively simple. And cannot be insured separately. The second point, association cargo insurance clause, the underwriting risk and exclusion liability, ICCA, is roughly equivalent to the People's Insurance Company of China, stipulated all risks with the broadest range of liability. Therefore, the institute cargo clauses adopt the general method of underwriting all risks. Except for exclusions, that is, except for the risks listed under exclusions, the insurer is not responsible for all risks, and other risks are all covered by the insurer. The excluded liability of ICCA includes the following four categories: first, general exclusion of liability; second, excluding liability for non-airworthiness and unsuitable cargo. Third, war exclusion liability. Fourth, ink workers are exempt from liability. ICCB is roughly equivalent to the WPA insurance stipulated by the People's Insurance Company of China. The specific risks covered include: first, fire and explosion; second, ships or barges that run aground, run aground or sink; third. Collision and derailment of land transportation vehicles. Fourth, collisions between ships, barges, or transportation vehicles and external objects outside of water. Fifth, unloading goods at the port of refuge. Sixth, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, lightning strikes. Seventh, general average sacrifice. Eighth, sailing goods or shooting waves into the sea. Nice sea water, lake water, or river water entering transportation vehicles or storage facilities. Tenth, the goods fell into the sea or fell during loading and unloading, causing total damage to the entire package. The exclusion of liability for ICCB, except for the liability for piracy and malicious damage insurance, is the same as that of ICCA. Different types of insurance mean that the outcome of receiving compensation from insurance companies for damaged goods during transportation is different, and their insurance rates are also different. When choosing insurance coverage, policeholders should not only consider ensuring that 
the goods are fully protected, but also try to save insurance premiums, reduce trade costs, improve economic efficiency, and ensure that the coverage is not missed, and the coverage is not cancelled. When choosing a type of insurance, the following factors should generally be considered comprehensively: first, characteristics of goods; second, packaging conditions of goods; third, transportation status of goods; fourth, transportation season; fifth, destination political situation; sixth, the difference between ICC and CIC terms. Fine. That's all for today's class. Please go back and review the content of this lesson and preview the next chapter, the freight insurance clauses in the contract. See you next class.